Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be going over the lightweight Java game library um, for Java. So down here it says what is lightweight Java game library. Lightweight Java game library is a cross-platform uh, li Java library that allows you to access things like OpenGL for C++ and Vulkan and OpenAL and all that stuff. Uh, basically in Java, so usually you'll only be able to access OpenGL and something like C++ or C like that, but um, with Lightweight Java Game Library, you can do that with um, Java, and it's very useful, it's very cool, there's all these features, low-level bindings, all that kind of stuff, so it is pretty, it's pretty epic Java library, and this is going to be a tutorial going over on how to use it and what to do and everything. So to begin, we're going to make a project in IntelliJ. So we're going to go down here and we're going to click on this new project button. So uh, once we click that, we're going to click on Gradle. Make sure you have Gradle. Uh, make sure you have this selected with Java 17. So um, this is about what you need to create your project. So after you're done, just click on next. And at this point, you can create your project name. There's some other stuff here, artifact coordinates. Here, I'm just going to paste in my project path. I already set this up, so it's on my desktop. So I'm just going to put this to 1.0 and change this to or.rollpon. Um, Rollpon is very epic. But anyways, we're going to click on finish and it's going to open up, and we're going to wait a bit. It's going to take a bit, so, yeah. Okay, so it looks like it is done. So, once it's done, you're going to want to look inside this build.gradle thing. Chances are it's already open, just like it is for me, but if it's not, you can look here in this folder, and here I'll say build.gradle. So, once you're in build.gradle, what you're going to want to do is... Inside build.gradle, we're going to want to put in the lightweight Java game library jars. Um, or no, more specifically, the script required to put in the jars so we can actually use lightweight Java game library. To do that, we're going to go to the web page, you know this, and we're going to click on the download section. We're going to click on customize lightweight Java game library 3. Click on release. Click on minimal OpenGL. Make sure Gradle is selected here then hit copy to clipboard so then we're gonna go back to IntelliJ and you're gonna wanna put replace this dependencies and repositories um, basically you wanna select dependencies and repositories and then hit Carl V on your keyboard so once you do that this icon should appear so you're gonna just wanna click that Okay, so it looks like it's done. So now we're gonna go back to this. We're gonna go to this SRC folder, and this is where we're gonna start coding. So in this Java folder, we're gonna right click. We're gonna hover over, hover over new, and click on package. And for now, we'll just uh, type engine. So this is gonna be our basically our game engine, our like our framework, our lightweight Java game library thing. And we're also going to create another package called game. And that should just be about it. So, in today's tutorial, we're just going to be creating a basic window. We're not going to be doing anything on the screen necessarily. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create a new package inside of engine. And we'll call this render. Uh, as you can see, it uh, in IntelliJ kind of combines together, but we don't want that. So we're going to make a new package. We're going to get a render at the end, and then we're just going to type logic. Then at inside renderer, render, sorry, we, we're going to make a new Java class, and we're going to call this window. Now, first of all, in window, we're going to create a private static final long window window ID window ID and for now we're just 
Actually, hold on, get rid of the final, sorry. Or maybe add it back. It's really up to your choice, but anyways, now what you're gonna wanna do is make a public static oh public static void initialize. <clears throat> and we're gonna want some a width and height. So then what you're gonna do oh yeah, I almost forgot. We need to actually import um GFW. So So now inside of the initialize um, function, we're going to first of all initialize GFW. So um, uh, we're also going to do it inside this if statement uh, just to make sure we can do some error checking. Uh, so if there is an error, we'll throw a runtime exception. Uh, GFW is unable to initialize. Now we're gonna set the window. Hold on. Now we're gonna set the window ID, and then we're gonna type GFW create window. We're gonna give it the width and the height. Now for the title, we'll just call it GFW display, and then we'll just do put zero zero at the end. I don't really know what monitor or share means. I'm assuming monitor is like um, what monitor or screen. You want to put it on, but I'm not entirely sure. And we're going to get rid of final because that is getting annoying. Yeah, that's very annoying. <clears throat> but either way, now we can start um, doing things like making contact. So later on in our game engine, we can uh, render stuff. So let's do that. Let's make, let's do GFW make context current and window id and we're going to type gl.create capabilities so this is going to basically create like a thing that allows us to render which we're going to do um, in future episodes so yeah but anyways after we do this we can basically make our game loop so we're going to do while uh, gfw window should close this basically uh, is like our game loop, so basically it allows us to um, do stuff like allows us to render stuff and update stuff and do all that. And you might be asking, well, why do you need to do that in a loop? Well, that's mostly because um, if you wanted, to, if you were to like render everything once and never do it again. It would just render for like a few seconds and then instantly disappear, and we don't want that. You know, we want something to be constant, always on the screen. So we're gonna do that. So inside this, we're going to have a GFW swap buffers, and we're gonna have window ID. So basically, what the swap buffers is is that uh, when we're rendering, we'll render on this like paper, okay, and then we'll swap the paper. So, like, the paper, like, you can think of it as, uh, behind the screen, we're drawing something, and then we flip it to the screen so uh, our player can see it and see our picture that we're drawing. We're also going to do pull events here, uh, which basically allows us to track what's happening. So, what what's happening here? Like, is the player closing the window? Is the player pressing a key? Is the player moving the mouse? All that kind of thing stuff. Now it's finally we're going to add a background to our window because right now um, our window is kind of just a black display. I mean you don't you can't see it yet since we haven't sent any runtime configurations and we don't have any main class but it's basically just a black display. Um, so we'll make it a white display. So what we'll do is that we're going to import up here we're going to import we're going to import static or dot org dot lightweight job game library dot open gl dot gl eleven um dot all so now what we're going to do is we're going to type gl clear gl color buffer bit and gl depth 
thought for a bit. Now, I don't really know what this is. It's probably just open gel stuff. Never really learned. So, yeah. But now we can actually make it so there's a color. So, you know, clear color basically allows us to assign a color to our window. So, um, this, we're, instead of doing it through RGB, we're going to do it from 0 to 1. So, that means entire white will just all be 4 ones. So, let's do that. There you go. Okay. Let's also, at the end here, let's also make it so we get rid of the window. So after the game loop or after the player closed the window, we actually stop or terminate GFW. And that will basically be our initialize function. So, or maybe more, we should rename that to run function. But either way, now since we've got our window we can actually start uh, making a main class, so like a main application. So that's what we'll do. So inside game, create a new Java class, call it main. Inside of main, we're going to make a public static void main string args. Then at the top here where it says add configuration, we're going to click on that. We're going to click on add new application. Call it main game engine. For the module, we'll specify Java 17. For the Java class, we'll have to actually specify the module first. So it's the you know, lightweight Java game library tutorial dot main, and then we can specify the main class. So just wait for a bit. Okay, there we go. Gonna hit okay. Uh, and then that should be it. So just click on apply. Okay. And inside this, we're just going to type in window, so here, dot run. And we'll give it a, a width and height of 800 and 400. So if we hit shift 10 on your keyboard, then wait a bit. There you go. We have a working GFW display. Now, obviously, there's nothing on the screen yet, but we're getting there. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that lightweight Java game library tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're probably going to go over some basic rendering. But either way, this is the GFW display. Bye!